think you should get a notification. Okay, so do you want me to introduce Shelley? Or do you want to do yeah. No, you yeah. go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> so this session um, is obviously from the title that we can see, Becoming Attachment Aware and Trauma Informed. So Shelley is, um, has very kindly volunteered to uh, take us along with this presentation. And she's going to be sharing what kind of training she did about um, relationships, trauma and attachment and how it's impacted on her school. So she's a head teacher. I'll let her introduce herself though, because I've just realised we haven't done introductions. <laughs> so hi, my name's Shelley Bennett. Um, I am a little bit nervous because how on earth do you follow Richard McGann? I mean, how do you do that? So um, yeah, I'm Shelley Bennett. I'm the head teacher at John T. Rice Infant School, which is Clipston, um, Forest, kind of Clipston Forest Town, Mansfield. Um, I've been there three years, um, so I do still class myself as a new head. I think I'll be there about 10 years and still be saying I'm a new head to people. Um, so, yeah, that's me. Brilliant. Thanks, Shelley. Um, and I'm Laura Kimber. I'm an assistant educational psychologist working in um, Nottinghamshire, and I'm here to assist Shelley in any way with IT things, but also kind of take you through the introductory task that we're going to do. So... Let me just check if there's anyone in the waiting room. No, we're all good. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to do hopefully something that is seamless and looks good. <laughs> so I'm going to change my um, camera. So the plan is just to show you what we're going to do first and then I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. So the first thing we're going to do is um, put you into breakout rooms and let you have a discussion about what attachment and trauma is for kind of your understanding of it right now so whether you have i can imagine there's a few that will have lots and lots of experience with this there might be some people who are new to a job or you know everyone's at a different starting point so what we're going to do is we're going to put you into breakout rooms let me just move on for a small group discussion and what we're going to do afterwards i'm going to kind of graphic what you what you have what discussion did you have the feedback so what is the two questions we're going to ask is what is your understanding of attachment and trauma and what impact this has on young people? So you might have examples um, and you might have case studies. Obviously, we need to be confidential, but, you know, we can share with uh, without names and things like that. So if I now stop screen sharing, if that's all OK with everybody, if anybody has any issues, please let us know on the chat. I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. So we have 18 participants. So let's say four rooms. So you'll be in groups of four or five. And if you could have those chats and then we'll ask for feedback when you're back. Um, we're going to give you about five minutes if that's okay. I know it's short timing, but we haven't got long. So we want to get feedback as quick as possible. Okay, so Hopefully you should get an invite to join a room now. Shelley, you will get an invite, but you don't have to click it. <laughs> Brilliant, people are leaving, so that means they're getting the invitations. Let me just check, I haven't missed anybody. <laughs> Yep, everyone just, there we go. Oh, in a room. Everyone's in a room. That is the main thing I was panicking about, thinking nobody's going to go. Let me change my camera. Okay. Hopefully they come up with a couple of ideas. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Like yeah, I, yeah. when I was saying it, I was thinking, you're probably are very aware of this. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> right, I will pause recording because yeah. it's just going to be. I'm, I'm sorry, can you just tell me which Sarah it was in that first group? Was it our group? Oh, it's, I don't know because I've only gone off your name. So it's Sarah, Sarah and Sarah Hewitt. No, it, <laughs> it doesn't matter though, if you want to share, I could, get, I could take your feedback. Hello, hi, it's Hello. Sarah here. I was in one of the Sarahs in the group. <laughs> That's brilliant. What kind of chats were you um, having, Sarah? Um, it was literally just around um, some of the experience that we, um, you know, where we're at with our schools, really. Um, yeah. Two schools up there. Um, and I know Sarah was just mentioning in her role um, the importance of key um, people 
Um, yeah. And I think that was sort of reiterated by Richard in, in his chat as well. Yeah, definitely. That that importance of relationship, connection, having those key people in your life, key people. No, that's great. And what kind of things did you say? Did you did you go on to talk about what those key people can do and what impact they have? Yeah, it's um, I mean, we, we sort of it was it was the time went very quickly. Um, but yeah, it was, no, it did. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, but we, we literally just were mentioning, um, you know, about the emotions involved and that, um, it, you know, yes, it's the, uh, the the looked after children, but there are other peoples that experience um, the attachment trauma and mm -hmm. it can be quite hidden. Um, you know, yeah. we all present attachment trauma in many ways um, and it's how, you know, the, the variance of those children and, and how they present and obviously that then depicts on how you can do the support as well. Yeah. Um, and it's what what similar messages, um, you know, link those children together um, and, and how staff really in our schools um, is how we're thinking of it, you know, can support. And it's just to be that listening ear and to be there. Yeah, no, they're really key points, definitely, like consistency. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, having those listening, having that ability to listen to the young people is really important. OK, brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, so I've seen some comments on the chat. So um, Jane saying we said how trauma can show in many different ways. So that's almost with the can be hidden. You know, it's not always going to be the textbook explanation of how you know a young person's gone through something and they will react in this way you we never know how anybody will react everybody's different so that's a really key message I think um so it can show I'll put show in different ways brilliant okay group four thank you Claire relationships the regularity of chats and connections are crucial yes so that regular contact um and having a consistent kind of, like we say, consistent message, but also consistency for the young person. So they know, you know, I don't know, they'll have they'll have that conversation with that staff member. They they tend to do that after lunch or something like that. I think that's really key. So relationships. Definitely. And the regularity and then chloe thank you for putting in the chat we spoke about how we can successfully support young people through trauma yes so it's thinking you know your positions in schools and educational settings where does that put you and where are you best placed to support the young people and how and how do we do that definitely so support supporting young people in your roles Great. Anything else? Oh, another one's come through on the chat. We talked about triggers and how this can affect young people later on. Definitely. And when, I think with triggers, what I think is um, they're really like, when I hear the word about triggers in the conversation, it's like, oh, it'll be really obvious what's triggered that young person. You know, it'll be, I can see that. I can see that this has happened. But actually, in real life, from speaking to teachers, it's just not the case. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to see, oh well, that's obviously happened because of this. So I think that's really that's where the relationship comes into it because when you know a young person really well, you'll be able to, you know, depict what triggers what triggers have happened. And you might it might not be as obvious, but because you know them so well, you're the one who might be able to unpick it a bit more, definitely. So triggers are really key for young people. Uh Group four, Tracy, we briefly discussed language use when speaking to students. Definitely. Language is um, a massive thing, I think, um, for, all, for all young people, regardless of whether, you know, they've experienced trauma or attachment difficulties. The language we use around young people has a massive impact. And even Richard was saying, you know, what what we say to young people follows them, doesn't it? Like he, like he, his story. So that we really need to be mindful of language that we're using definitely language oh lots coming through now thank you <laughs> so group three i work in a special school and we spoke about how additional needs also impact yes so 
you've got maybe a young person who's um, having difficulties with has attachment difficulties and trauma, but also additional needs which you need to understand and um, you know take into account when you're thinking about what work you're going to do with them. Definitely. So additional needs. I'll just quickly go through the rest. Um, good contact with carers and having carers input about the young person. So having those connections with, um, yeah, the support network around the young person. So connection with carers. Definitely. These are brilliant. Thank you for sharing. And then find, I'll do this as a final point. So articulated about feeling safe and importance of people voice that's a really good one to end on that feeling of safety because school is often where children do feel safe um, and young people so thank you very much for your feedback i'm going to stop there just because we could carry on forever um, and i'll hand over to shelly i'm going to share the powerpoint now sarah do you have something to say I, oh sorry I, it's all right i just wanted to say that we talked about the quote from dr margot sunderland that says that children should suffer the art sorry have the art of suffering well so that we recognize that we can't take away sometimes the things that are life events that happen to us but it's about how we deal and help support that person through it so if and looking about the adults that are around that child when that's happening and if the adults don't have that emotional capacity to support the child through that event then it is looking towards other adults that could be around that child's life whether they be in school or extended family or friends that they can actually offer some of that emotional support whilst that child travels through it but I the guess of the role of schools is just noticing and being recognizing that there is a role and you do make a difference yeah definitely yeah, thank you Sarah thank you yeah thank you I, I didn't thank you for picking up on that Shelley as well I didn't notice so let me move over here share my screen can you all see that okay yeah I can see well, that so yeah, we'll hand okay. over to Shelley now to share her story. Okay, so just before I start, I've explained that I'm, I'm a head teacher at an infant school, which is a, a it's an absolute privilege. Um, but there's just a little bit of a health warning before I start. I've, I've been, a, I still class myself as a teacher, even though I sit at a desk a lot. Um, so I've been a teacher for 26 years. And over that time, I've been to kind of events and training and, and head teachers will come on and you know, in, in the past, through no fault of anybody's, I've kind of sat there and I've listened to these amazing inspirational things. And, you know, I've sat and thought, goodness me, imagine if I could do that at my school or help facilitate that. And then you get back to your real life and it's, you know, there's a pile of things on your desk and, you know, there's been a burst water pipe and, you know, life kicks in. And uh, so from today, if you can just take away one thing um, and, and, and it might be, goodness me, we are doing a great job at this. You know, we're really attachment and trauma aware at, at my school or my setting and do that. But please don't think for one moment that I'm sitting here saying I've done it. I've sorted it. You know, the behaviour at my school is brilliant. I've got no problems. We know what we're doing. You know, everything's fine because it isn't. OK, so just a bit of a health warning before I start. So I think the theme of today and when we listened to Richard was about relationships and how key they are. And being a teacher for all of these years and now being ahead, uh, I've already said it's an absolute privilege. You know, I get to go to school every day and there's 200 little people who, when I walk through the hall or a classroom, they're clamouring to tell me things, they want to show me their pictures, they want to hold my hand before COVID times. You know, what an absolute privilege to, to get to do that. And of course, in your um, jobs, whether you're teachers and senior leaders, social workers, you, you also get to work with young people. Um, and what's never failed to amaze me in my job now and in my, in my previous um, deputy roles and, and teacher roles is um, the relationships that you form. And it's exhausting, isn't it? You know, it's a privilege, but it's absolutely exhausting to form those relationships, to remember about children's brothers and sisters and the name of their dog and their guinea pig and, you know, where, when their birthday is and we do it don't we because we know unless we do that 
nothing you do is ever going to make a difference. So um, I just kind of wanted to start with that. So I was a deputy head, obviously, before I was a head. It's a really successful school in Mansfield, Crescent Primary. And I was there for years and years, 20 years I spent there. I absolutely loved that. Went from being a teacher to a senior lead. I worked with some inspirational people. Um, as, I, as I progressed through my career um, at, at Crescent and then I moved to John T, with behaviour, there, there became a bit of a, um, like a bit of a sticky moment where all schools developed over kind of the kind of 2000 onwards behavior techniques didn't we and we all had either the traffic light system sad cloud happy cloud you know all of those kind of things and lots of schools still do that my school still do a version of that um and it, it was the it was like an epiphany wasn't it oh goodness we'll have it all up in the classroom all the children's names on it brilliant and when a child uh, you know misbehaves breaks the school rule that this will happen and eventually oh my goodness they might get onto that that sad cloud and oh dear and their behavior will change and you know that that was that was accepted and most schools you know have that version and, and some schools still do it but I, can't, I kind of as i went on my journey and became ahead i kind of thought oh i don't know about this i don't know you know, I've always been well behaved myself. And, you know, when I was at school, I would never have done anything naughty. But, you know, if, if, if I was one of those children that kept making that wrong choice and ended up on that sad cloud every week, every week and didn't get their golden sticker, how might I feel? And I was reading, reading around things one day and I had this kind of light bulb moment and I, and I read that, um, and I should have really known this already, but I read that if a child's got low self-esteem, and then they're being publicly managed for their behavior, which the traffic light system that's stuck on the classroom wall is publicly managing behavior. You know, parents see it, don't they? The head teacher sees it, all the other children see it. And it lowers that self-esteem of that child. And if a child's already struggling with doing, making the right choices and doing the right kind of thing, then the lower their self-esteem goes, the less chance you're going to change their behaviour in the long term. And it, I kind of sat there and thought, oh, grief, why, what, what am I doing? You know, why, why haven't I realised this before? And why haven't I done something about it? But then I've got this brick wall and I don't know, I think it was probably just me. I kind of thought, right, OK, well, take the traffic lights away. But then what? It'll be anarchy across school. We'll have no rules will have nothing of the children will be running wild parents will be you know clamoring the walls my staff will be annoyed at me so I couldn't get past what I did instead um and also we've got you know myself as well in the past we've got kind of um staff and other people saying well those naughty children if the others see them being naughty and getting away with it they'll be naughty as well and everybody will be naughty oh, I don't know what to do instead so somehow um, I fell upon um, this training um, and it's um, attachment and trauma friendly schools in Nottinghamshire. And the most amazing women ran this course. So Kate Taylor was one of them um, and uh, just changed my life, honestly. So uh, I booked onto this training and thought, you know what? give it a go I'm a new head want to bring in a new thing at school so I thought I need to get everybody on board uh, I need to take some staff with me it's no good just me going or else they'll think I'm coming back with some hippie trippy clappy thing and you know what's she going on about now so um, I took my behaviour lead Charlotte and I took my Senko um, and off we went it was a intake farm primary and there were about I know six other schools went and uh, we'd, we'd booked for three full days training. I thought, right, brilliant. Got my lunchbox, off we went. Um, sat, you know, sat waiting with my notepad and I, I went wanting a behaviour policy. OK, so give me first day. Where is it? Give me a behaviour policy and tell me what to do so that I can keep these children um, that have had attach attachment issues and have had trauma right from being babies, some of these children. And, you know, I don't know what happened to these children as babies, but, you know, attachment and trauma can begin, can't it, within the womb? We know that. Um, 
So I thought I knew a little bit about attachment and trauma and, and, on, and off we went. So Kate began that training and I was just hooked. If you ever have the chance to go and do this training, please do it. Um, the, the, psycholo the education psychologists are so knowledgeable and just brilliant at, at drawing you in and getting you to fully understand what was going on. Um, so the, the first day we explored what attachment and trauma is, um, and I, I really didn't, I thought I knew, but I really didn't get it. And um, it was the, the trainings, I think it's called, but Laura, so, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure it is, um, making attachment and trauma informed schools within Nottinghamshire. I think it's that, Laura, is it? I think it may have been renamed now, um, oh. if I'm correct. There's um, building relational schools. Um, right. I think it's called that now, but it was, it's the same thing. <laughs> right, okay. And I think you might find that training on the East Midlands training site. I was on there the other day and I saw something about it. Yes, yeah, it's on our website. Fantastic. So sat there, attachment and trauma the first day. And I left that training session and I had a bit of a cry in my car um, because I just thought, you know what? And my job as head, I'm, I'm the DSL at school, safeguarding lead. And, you know, I've seen stuff that some children are going through, you know, they're on child protection plans. They've got, you know, horrific things are happening and have happened to those children. And I know about those children. They're on the CPOMs at school. We share that information. We're catering for those children. OK, what about the others? There's loads of children that are going through things or have been through things. Um, I ain't got a clue about them, but I'm still treating them the same with my behaviour policy. And I'm not kind of taking into account the attachment and the trauma that they might have been through. Yeah, that's it. Um, so first day thought, right, I'm hook, line and sinker into this, but I still like a behaviour policy. So, if, you know, maybe they'll give me one next time. Uh, they never mentioned giving us a behaviour policy because it just isn't about that. So um, we went on those three days training um, and uh, it was eye opening. So day two and three, they were about right now, you know, fully about what attachment and trauma is and how it can manifest in behaviours. What are you going to do at your school to account for that where behaviour is? is concerned um, and we went down the route of changing our behavior policy that was what I'd gone for and by god we were going to do it come hook line or sinker so um the, the I was lucky because my senko and my behavior lead they were very um on board with this as well it wasn't just me um so day two was all about kind of making a plan for your school and planning out how are you going to put that attachment and trauma into your school and change some part of practice? And then day three was, was doing that. So we kind of thought about, well, what's our plan when we get back to school? And the main thing was getting everybody on board because it's no good, is it? We've all worked for in establishments in the past where the person at the top has a great idea. They go back and say, right, we're doing this. OK, we're throwing all that out and we're doing this. And everybody goes, why? are we oh she's had another idea so it's about getting everybody on board so what we made the decision about doing was when we went back um to cascade the training the three days training back to every single staff member so that included teachers tas midday supervisors and office staff everybody cask had it cascaded down to them and i thought it was important not just to bring in new teachers and because midday supervisors who would be a midday supervisor it's the hardest job in the world isn't it an hour of the day where the children are just wild on the playground they need to let loose and they need some tools don't they these midday supervisors and what I found was when we did that training in school, it was um it just opened up a can of worms and you have to, I had I think looking back I'd probably do it a little bit differently. I gave a health warning. I said, you know, it's attachment and trauma, it can be painful. Many of us have had our own attachment and trauma issues, but I'd never really considered how deep some of those were. And like with my middays, um, you know, we're sharing any names or anything, but there was one midday who she was really affected by it. And she said, oh my God, you know, 
I've gone through trauma and I've got attachment issues and I never even knew, but I know now. And that's why I behave this way. And I'm an adult and I still do it. So I think if I was doing it again, I would really, really focus upon that well-being aspect of my staff as I trained them and making sure I was checking in. I did check in, but I think I would do it more because it's painful to realise that you've actually gone through trauma or attachment self. And, you know, you're still dealing with it, you know, as an adult. Um, so throughout a whole training, training of myself and then training of my staff and cascading that, the, the underlying theme that threaded through was relationships. Now, I've never worked in a school where people didn't love children. I don't know whether I've just been lucky or whether it's just about teachers. We love children, don't we? You know, Christ, we really do love them and we want the best for them. Um, but it's relationships and how powerful they can be. Um, so that was really the training that I did. Um, there was a little bit of resistance from a couple of staff members. Um, and that's not to say that they, they, they didn't buy into it, but they're, they're a bit old school. So, you know, like child's naughty, they need a punishment. Child does this, they need to be on the tutting chair, that kind of thing. Um, and I, I tried to combat that by bringing it back to attachment. There's always a reason a child does something. We might not understand it. They definitely don't understand it, but it's our job as an adult to find why. Um, and then I, I just got a couple of really sticky staff and I just couldn't move them away from the fact that we are gonna get rid of that traffic light system if it kills me and we're going to do something else. So I used an, 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 an analogy with them. So I said, right, well, we're coming to school one day um, and I've put a notice board up in the in the entrance hall. Beautiful, I've done it. And there's a staff traffic light system there. So green, amber, red, all the staff's photos around the outside. Now, the day before you were slightly late coming to school and I saw you skid into the car park, um, your teaching resources had popped into your room and they weren't ready. And then I know that you left your classroom a mess that day because the caretaker came and told me. So I decided that night I was going to put your name on red, your picture on red. Everybody else's is on green. You're on red. How do you how do you feel? You've walked into school. How are you feeling? Did you lose trust in me? Are you going to do your best for me? And are you going to love school? And they were like, no, can't stand you. If you've put my picture on red and told everybody why, I'm not going to do my best for you. I'm not going to want to come to school. I'm going to actually look in the job pages and get a job somewhere else. And I said, it's exactly how children feel, okay? We think we're changing their behavior by putting them on red and saying, you're not getting your cloud, your, your sticker this week or whatever it is. But actually all we're doing is saying to everybody, you're just a naughty boy or a naughty girl. Um, we're not changing that behavior. We're not, we're not showing those children impact. Um, we're just, it's like a little threat, isn't it? And, and I don't I don't work for people who give me little threats, so why should children? And they got on board, okay? It's still a battle some days, okay? And we do still revert back some days. So, you know, I, I've not cracked it completely. So the rollout, really, what did that look like? So, like I said, I work in an infant school, and if any of you work in an infant school, it's, it's a magical place. But um, they, they don't come fully formed, do they, infants? They've not got a full vocabulary. They, they do random things and then don't know why they've done them. Um, and uh, it, 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 it was tricky and it still is. So I tried to get all stakeholders on board. So my staff were on board. Um, I wrote to parents and um, I, I told them about kind of the changes we were going to make and just jump going back actually the changes we were going to make so we had a couple of staff meetings and then an inset day with the whole staff and we we looked at our rules to start with so um when i'd gone to the school three years ago um the school didn't have 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 any particular rules so i'd gone and right we need some rules and we'd written six rules three years ago well i could never remember them. i've got like the capacity to remember three things if i'm lucky in one in any one day so we said six rules is just too many 
So we decided as a staff to, to do three rules, okay? And I didn't want specifics. So, you know, like things like don't run down a corridor, you know, okay, right, fine. So we went general. So we've got be kind, be hardworking, be respectful. And, and they really encompass what we would want when the children leave us in year two, them to be a rounded person. We want children to be kind, we want them to work as hard as they possibly can, and we want them to show respect, okay, and be respectful. And um, we, we, we debated on that last one because it's a tricky word, but, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to develop language, aren't we? So, you know, um, we wanted to put a, a word in there that we would teach children so that by the end of the, the uh, four years that they're with us, they would know that. So we started with rules and we put them all around school and we taught children them. And then we looked at, um two things because we, i want our i wanted our behavior policy to be a positive rather than something to beat children you know with a, with a stick with so we went positive first and we looked at what we did so don't we didn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. what's the point of that so what do we do that's good we asked the children which we get some interesting answers at infant and nursery level and then we asked the um, staff, we asked the staff, um, and we came up with, we want to keep some rewards. So we, we do these stamp sheets, you know, it's very standard in school. Child's doing lovely work, give them a stamp, stamp it on their sheet, when they get 25, they get a certificate. When they've gone all the way through, they get a little teddy bear, John T. Rice on. The children love them, okay? Very careful with them now though, because, I don't know, doing assembly. It's the same old child who's sitting up beautifully, isn't it? Oh, Esme, you can have a, a stamp for your stamp sheet. Little Jimmy is bent over double, lying on the whole floor, isn't he? Doesn't get a stamp. So it was about, okay, we'll keep our stamp sheets, but we need to actually empower children. So children give stamps out now. So they'll say, oh, I think Jimmy deserves a stamp because he's really trying to sit up. And then he's up doesn't it gets a stamp and it's so much more powerful from a peer so we, we do stamp sheet um verbal praise honestly it's like falling from the heavens and it does work doesn't it you know if you if you it's very powerful head teacher rewards they come galloping to me for a, a head teacher reward well done assemblies we keep all of those standard things but the thing that we brought in and this came out of the training um, with, the, with the EPs, we do a recognition board, and that's the photo on the right just there. Um, the six um, words, so thinking, effort, kindness, resourcefulness, those kinds of things. The children have their little um, photograph. On a Friday, they're all put at the bottom, and then children and staff, anybody in school, if, it, if they notice a child in that class doing something, so it might be they've, they've done a brilliant question on the carpet or, you know, they've helped tie somebody's shoes or they've gone and sharpened the pencil instead of sitting there waiting for the, another pencil to drop from the ceiling, that kind of thing, then we notice. So, you know, kind of, oh, Esme, what beautiful effort for that. Go and put your name on the, on the, um, go and put your card on the recognition board. And that replaced the traffic light system. Took the traffic lights down. I had a big burning of them all. And we, we, we put those recognition boards up and children want to get on there. Okay. Um, it is our aim, because I'm very PC, is the, the aim to get everybody on the recognition stars before Friday. OK, if you're not on, nothing happens. No, you know, the, the world doesn't stop, but it, it's nice to get everybody somewhere and then it starts again the next week. And it's lovely as a head to go into the room and go, oh, my goodness, everybody's on the recognition board. Isn't this class wonderful? Or go in and say, oh, you know, Timmy, go and put I can see you are trying so hard. Go and put your name on on the recognition board. And it's just a spin on things, isn't it? Rather than going into a classroom and going, goodness me, who's on red? And I used to call them tutting chairs. We'd have these chairs from Ikea, um, little chairs with stumpy legs, uh, one in each classroom. And uh, the previous behaviour system with the traffic lights, if you did get onto red, you'd have to go and have some, some time out and sit on a chair. And I renamed them tutting chairs, only to the adults, not children in school. Because I'd go into a room and I don't know why I would do it because I hated it. I'd go, 
you know, when you see somebody sitting on a chair, how does that make them feel? Don't make them feel any better. They're not going to change their behavior, are they? They've probably forgotten when they're sitting on the chair, why, why they're there. Because they're spinning round, aren't they? They're four years old. No idea why they're on the sitting chair. Um, so no tutting chairs anymore in school. Um, and um, we go positive. Now, you say, it's really important. You can't not also look at unwanted behavior. So, you know, we could go down the recognition board. We could be as positive as we want, but there's still going to be times, aren't there, when you're on the carpet and children are shouting out or children are unkind to one another, or, you know, those, we all work in schools, don't we? You know, it happens. And my staff were very worried. And this was the barrier I'd got as well. OK, we've taken the traffic lights away, but what do we do when children do misbehave and do break the rules and do need some kind of consequence? Because we live in a world, don't we, where if there's no consequence, it, it would be anarchy. So that's where we really thrashed it out with all staff and we really, really, really uh, worked it through. And I think in any establishment, any school, you've got to go with what everybody decides and that was the most important pivotal moment so we said and this works for us it wouldn't work for everybody uh, we don't have any visual um up in the class any visual uh who's broken the rules there is on the back of each board a little a4 poster with everybody's name on okay and on there is are the consequences. The children all know what happens if they are breaking rules and if they are being unkind. So we give a quiet verbal warning, okay? Now, I say quiet, this took some training. So um, in class, historically, you might, I've done it, you might have heard a, a grown up say, that's a verbal warning for blah, 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 blah. And all the children are listening, aren't they? They love it, don't the children? When other children are misbehaving, they cannot wait to tell parents when they get out. So there's nothing to say. So we do quiet verbal warnings as much as possible. I do have to remind some members of staff about it. Um, so it's going over and it's catching that moment and saying, I'd like you to stop that, please. I'd like you to and give the positive. So, so one of the um, delegates talked about language. So we'll say things like, um, I can see you're really grumpy about that, um, but I would really love it if you could. Okay, so you acknowledge the behavior, but actually then give them the positive, what we want. Um, and this is your verbal warning. And I know you're gonna turn it around now. Okay, and then off we go. So the child next door might hear, but the whole room doesn't hear. To remember, because my staff were like, how am I going to remember I've given a verbal warning? You know, I'm teaching English, there's 30 children in the class. How am I going to remember that child's had a verbal warning? So little poster on the back, whiteboard pen, teacher just marks on that poster, that child's had a verbal warning. Carry on the lesson. If that same child pulls it round like normal, they carry on. If they're carrying it on and, and you know you can't ignore that behavior anymore they haven't turned it around after that last chat they get another verbal warning quietly done again swift prompt to the point so they've had a verbal warning and a verbal warning hopefully and we do find this now most children can pull it around um if not they get a bit of thinking time from tt time not on a thinking time chair, because the minute you sit them on a thinking time chair, all children go, oh, they've been naughty. So it might be if they're sitting at a table on their own, they carry on sitting there, but you go over and you say, I want you to have a bit of thinking time now, two minutes thinking time, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it, okay? And then you go back. Now, this is what we call restorative time. And I know loads of schools do restorative. Do they call it restorative justice? I don't know. That sounds a bit like the, you know, the court system, but they do restorative time. Now, in an infant school, that looks really, really different to a secondary school, all right, because of language. Um, so on the backs of our all of our lanyards, I've, I've printed this at home and it's not in colour. We have a little, um, a little thing that looks like this it's got verbal warning verbal warning restorative and thinking on one side and then on this side it has some questions so if a child gets to thinking time before they rejoin that lesson or rejoin whatever they were doing they have a little moment with the adult that's got them to thinking time 
Um, and depending on their age, their stage, what it was that they were doing that got them there, depends on what questions you ask them. Um, and it's things like what happened? What were you thinking when that happened? How did it make you feel inside? How are you now? What do you need to feel better? What needs to happen to put things right? Now, if, if you're talking to a nursery child, no, you, you wouldn't go through these restorative questions because you get nothing back. If it's a, a, a more able year two, then yes, you go through those. And what we wanted from that is the learning that comes from that behavior. So too many times children leave a situation and they've got no idea what they did. So they'll get sent to me and I'll say, what happened? Like, I don't know. I've got no idea what happened. Um, and I'll say, well, who else was involved? No idea. No, no, they've got nothing. And what we wanted was to turn that around. So children had a narrative. They were, they were able to say, well, this happened. I felt this way. They felt this way. And maybe next time I could do this. Um, it's taking some training. OK, um, and it's a long term goal. We do have a serious incident, a, a further consequence. So after restorative, children then go back to their normal kind of, um, whether they're playing, playtime, work time, whatever, and things reset. If an incident is serious, spitting, kicking, swinging people around with the hoods and trying to strangle them, you know, the normal children things that sometimes happen, they do go to straight to a red card. That is dealt with quietly and not um, branded across the classroom. Um, and they get sent to a senior leader, which is normally myself, who they have a little time out in my room and then we go through restorative questions again. Don't ever really um, ask children to apologize. If they want to apologize, they do. Um, but I'm, uh, we're not big on kind of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let's have a hug. If they want to and it makes them feel better, we do do that. Um, but there are other ways, aren't there? Um, just let me look at the time. Oh, look at the time. I need to be super quick. Really, really quickly. We teach children about mood monsters. Really important because children in infant school have got no language whatsoever, have they? I feel sad, I feel happy and that's it. Um, so that's an ongoing thing. Um, we have bespoke individual plans for children because some children sit right outside this and they just cannot get up for whatever reason. They just can't get on board. Um, we're still in a journey. The impact of it. Um, when I first started in the summer, track behaviour in summer 18, there were 25 children on um, serious behaviours that were being tracked. Um, this autumn that's just gone there's four. So I don't know, COVID might have something to do with that because we don't all play on the playground at the same time. So I'm not saying it's just our behaviour policy that's made a difference. Um, I think the biggest impact for me is uh, children aren't going out of school going, oh, so-and-so was really naughty today and Miss did this. And, and because it's nobody else's business. Children's behaviour is children's business. And our business is about teaching them impact um, and what they can do to help themselves really. Um, it's a work in progress um, because COVID's definitely got in the way. Um, infants, they don't always say the right things, um, but some of the things that they have said, um, one of the children said to me, when we got rid of the traffic lights, it was the best day ever. I used to feel embarrassed when I got onto red. Who wants a child to feel embarrassed? It's awful, isn't it? Um, Mood monsters have helped me say how I feel and make a mistake, but everyone doesn't find out, only me and my teacher, you know, and that's how it should be. I love being put on the recognition board. It makes me want to try my best. I'm proud of myself. Um, and the school rules are fair. I can remember them. Um, I have to, you know, I give up. They want, she just wants to try her best now. Um, and I think that's really what you want, isn't it? Um, it's not perfect yet. We've got a long way to go. 
these infants take some training. They really, really do. Um, but I am proud of my school and I'm proud of kind of the journey we've been on. Um, so that's it, really. We were going to do some breakout rooms, but I've been rabbiting on for so long. We've not got time. So I'm so sorry. No, what I thought, Shelley, is I could put the um, questions in the chat. And if you take yeah. a note, if everyone could copy them or take a note if you want to, and maybe just take that forward. Um, and think about it is that all right Shelley I'll do that yeah definitely if anybody wants to ask me any questions just feel free um but yeah thank you <laughs> and there were the questions just there I'm going to just paste them in the chat so that if you want to take a copy of them and yeah. take them forward if anybody did want to contact me, you're more than welcome to, and I am happy to send my behaviour policy or anything. But like I say, you've got to make it your own. But, you know, that was a thing that I was hanging on to um, when, when I did the training. But actually, there's so much more for it. So, yeah, thank you. It's not letting me go, copy. haven't we? Because we've got to get back to the main room. <laughs> it's not letting me copy them. I don't know why. No. If, if you can hang around a minute, that I can post them in just a minute but i know we have got to go <laughs> yeah we do we don't miss him <laughs> oh thank you oh it's a really nice some days i'm not <laughs> all right then Sh shall we go laura and then get back into the other room yeah i'm just going to paste these comments thank you for all your nice comments um thank i'm just gonna... there we go i've got them i know thank you might you. last minute.com <laughs> There we go. So if you wanted to copy them, these are the questions that we we're going to ask. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you back in the main room.